God. Why are you on here? Because I want to discover your culture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Salute e vida. Hi, I'm Norman Valley, the Tool Belt Diva. My hometown, Brooklyn, New York, has become the hotbed of artisanal everything. But before the hipsters discovered the beauty of handmade crafts and farm-to-table culinary arts, artisans throughout the world have been making things by hand, one item at a time, focusing on distinctiveness and high quality, using traditional methods the same way their forefathers did thousands of years ago. I'm going to take you on a journey to meet these artisans that are keeping their trades alive, off the beaten path, and what better place to start than Sardinia. This island west of Rome is known for its exquisite beaches and steep, fertile mountains. But we're going to the heartlands, to a region called Barbaja, meaning lands of the barbarians, named by the Romans over 2,000 years ago, where we'll experience the mysterious masks, customs, and traditions of Sardinia. We'll get to meet the artisans in their workshops and partake in all of the fabulous local flavors and carnival festivities. Here we go. What makes Carnival so different in Sardinia are the masks. People had faces with charcoal and they had different masks and I asked them, what do they mean? And there was always a different explanation. So you're the expert here at the museum. Tell me what the masks mean. They are pagan masks, they are pagan celebrations and they are still alive. She is Safilonzana, she is the spinner. She is spinning the uh, white of life. And oh. during the parade, she treats the people. If they don't do what she wants, she's going to cut it. Whoa! <laughs> nice! This is the cow and this is the shepherd. He is the symbol of life and reality. The shepherd is bringing the animal to die, to sacrifice. They are the masks of Mamoyada, Mamontones, Isso Adores. Isso Adore means someone who has the lasso. We're talking about a tradition, a history of over 2,000 years. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Learning about the masks is great, and now I'm ready to meet the amazing artisans that make these masks. Ruggiero and his son Daniele are first up. The masks I've seen are polished works of art. I didn't expect the tools used to carve the delicate features would include a chainsaw, a bandsaw, and a hatchet. This block of wood was part of a tree just a few minutes ago. But with a few cuts by the sculptor, you can already see the face take shape. You can see the face. What? Wow, that's, that's a wicked, wicked nose job right there. So right now he's gouging out the eyes. That's, yeah, that's wicked. I'm amazed how it just slices through the wood, right? Like butter. Can I try it? You show me how? I never carved wood like this. Oh, I see. so first you cut down, and then you go in like that. It's beautiful, wow. These are great. You start with this, and then... I'm so happy to see the artisanal mastery passed on to the current generation, keeping the magic of the masks of Mamoyada alive. This is why you guys are masters, because you can take a rough piece of wood and make something so beautiful. What about you? The same nose? Look, there's a family resemblance. It's handsome. Handsome. Very handsome. The family resemblance to the masks is uncanny. I can get used to finishing off every work session with some amazing homemade wine from Sardinia's Cananao grapes, also known as Grenache. Salute e vita. E vita. Centani. The world would be a better place if we were drinking this. While my Italian is pretty good, I'm happy to have my friend Damiana with me to help with the Sardinian dialect and join in on the fun. We're in another beautiful town in the middle of Sardinia called Otana, and we're about to check out another master artisan. 
I'm tripping over these masks. I mean, they're so different than what yeah. we've seen before. Do you know about them? Yeah, they're traditional from Sardinia and specifically from this village, Octana. They're so colorful compared to the ones that we saw the other day that yeah. were black and dark. These are more festive, but at the same time, they look really scary. Yeah. Like they're not, it doesn't look like a friendly animal. Well, we're gonna get to meet the, uh, the master the artisan. Yeah, I'm so curious about that. Me too. What kind of wood is it? Tiopo. Yeah, Tiopo. I think it's a place Yeah. It's amazing how, how fast he goes through that wood. Uh, now he's gonna show you how he traps the mask. Wow. Look how beautiful he just carves that out like that. And fast. It makes me jealous. <laughs> because I could never use a utility knife like that. Quante ore ci vogliono di fare una masca? Sette, otto ore di lavoro. Seven, eight hours to make a mask. Dipende anche dalla grandezza. Questo è per un bambino piccolo, quindi ci vogliono meno ore. Per un adulto è più impegnativo comunque. This is a small one for kids. Oh, okay. But for adults, it takes yeah. longer. They tailor each mask for each face. Can I try this one on? <laughs> wow, you look, you look scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is a bull? Yeah, a, a bull with the horns, donkey. This would be a mask that is anthropomorphic, that represents the human. This represents the human. Okay, so this is the master, the owner of the animal. It represents a bit the fight between man and nature. They kind of use each other, need each yeah. other, they fight, yeah. they make up, they fight, they make up. Can you hear this sound? Yeah. Yeah, these are the best. And men, the bells we just yeah, saw yeah, the and those guys are wearing these masks. I want to go check it out. During Carnival, thousands of people line the streets in Otana as children and adults march, acting out scenes depicting the struggle between man and nature. I can't imagine marching in the parade while wearing 55 pounds worth of bells. I guess that's why the bars are so full during Carnival. This morning we started out seeing the master craftsman making his masks, and I got to see them in action, and I never expected them to come to life like they have. I mean, it has been loud and crazy and very, very dramatic. It's incredible. Really, what an experience. Our next stop is the father and son's bell making team, Campanacci Flores. <laughs> That's a big difference. Four generations of bell makers creating their art the same way their great grandfather did when he started the business in the hills of Sardinia two centuries earlier. Their tools are homemade and remind me of an elementary school art class for giants, but they sure get the job done. I'm gonna try one. I can try it? <laughs> you get your whole body into it. You gotta use your body weight. This is gonna be fun. is amazing. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it looks like an hourglass. So from this, you get the After Marco cuts the metal hourglass figure, Papa takes over and hammers the metal into a bell-like shape. No machines, molds, or measurements in this bell foundry, just old-fashioned artisanal perfection. That's amazing. I can't believe the speed that he does that. And you have to do the sound. Yeah. yeah. The bell sounds dull at this stage, but Ignazio has some tricks up his sleeve that will bring out the magic tone. That's actually solder, right? Solder? Yeah. 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 Uh, a caldo? How do you touch it? Oh, yeah. No, it's hot. <laughs> I know, but even the bottom is hot. Yeah. Let me see your hands. Wow, that's... Whoa. 
That's very hot. Wow. Okay, this is too hot for me to hold. <laughs> it's really it's hot. hot. It is. After their father fashions the metal into the bells, the brothers place them in a stone crucible that they cover with clay before placing it in the fire pit. Wow, those are some serious gloves right there. The fire pit will heat the stone container to over 900 degrees Celsius. That's 1,652 degrees Fahrenheit, the melting point of brass. There are no thermometers or timers here, but they get it right every time. Okay. So, so now we heat cover right. this crucible base, and in one hour we're going to turn it. Oh my God! Whoa! Maybe, maybe go down. Woo! The heat is so intense, we're not even allowed in the same room when they roll the urn out of the fire pit. Recycled bullet shell casings are melted to seal the bells, creating a beautiful brass finish and a magical sound. With the brass now liquefied in the molten cylinder, Salvatore and Marco roll the crucible back and forth to evenly spread the brass over the bells. I really wish I could see what's going on inside. We so eventually, you're going to hear the bells yeah, moving and inside, and that's when yeah. you know. Nothing is digital. Nothing is, yeah, you can't, you know, you can't, you're not going to read a number and go, okay, it's ready to go. Everything is, that's what makes it an art. Yeah. With the crucible now at a reasonably cool temperature of only a few hundred degrees, it's time to crack it open. And I can't wait to see what the bells are going to look like when they come out. When this melts, it, it it covers all of the holes. Yeah, it fills exactly. in all of the holes, exactly. and that's what makes the right acoustics. Yeah. Okay, so all that becomes liquid, and then yeah, when it exactly. rolls, it goes around the outside. So this is before, and this is after. Wow. wow. <laughs> that's a big difference. Italy might be famous for its design of shoes, but the most famous shoemaker in Sardinia is Constantino Titi Pudu, known for his rugged and handsome shepherd boots. I'm excited to watch him make my custom pair by hand. Oh, buongiorno Titi! Mi sono Norma, piacere. Questa è mia amica Damiana. Damiana, piacere. I'm here with Titi, he just measured my feet. People come from all over Sardinia to have custom-made shepherd boots and shoes made by Titi. I want to know how many years he's been making shoes. Da quanti anni? Sta facendo i scarpi 15 anni? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. Fifteen years. And that's going to be the sole. So now he's attaching the upper shoe to the sole. So basically, he wraps it all around. These are just temporary nails in place, just tacking it and then he sews it. He's literally using the boar hair as a needle. Yeah. This tool? This tool? It's 180 years. It's a 100 year old tool. It's a 100 year old. Wow. And it belonged to his great, great grandfather. Yeah, exactly. Two greats. Three or two or three? Yeah, three. Three. These are beautiful. They're really, yeah, yeah it's very beautiful. So let me ask you a question. The, the, the soles mm -hmm. for the shepherd, mm -hmm. are they smooth like this? Le scarpe, le sole delle scarpe dei pastori sono così lisce? Okay. Per evitare di attaccare il fango. You know what? I know exactly what he said. <laughs> because I was walking in the fields the other day, you'll explain. And I, when I went home, I had a big sheep turd stuck all over this, I had to brush it out in the hotel bathroom. It was embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> Titi's work is incredible as he cuts, glues, and stitches the leather boots by hand. This artisan won't compromise, and the fit you get with Titi's custom-made boots can't be matched by any machine.
That is beautiful. I mean, this is the work of a master craftsman making shepherd boots for centuries the same way, right? Made in Sardinia. Made in Sardinia. Where are we going now? Adesso andiamo da un amico pastore. We're going to see the sheep. Watching the bells being forged by hand is incredible. And to hear their beautiful sounds on the sheep running free in the mountains of Sardinia is a dream come true for an Italian girl from Brooklyn. The Sarda sheep are indigenous to Sardinia and are famous for the Sarda pecorino that is produced from their milk. Our host, Cencedo, is an amazing chef and only uses locally sourced fresh ingredients. So after showing us the source of his cheese, it's on to the pasta shop, where I'll be making some traditional Sardinian pastas. I'm going to eat tonight, that's for sure. So if I want to eat tonight, i got to make my own pasta. OK. OK, I'm ready. OK. Cute. All right, I'm making pasta for tonight. Okay. Oh, bravo. Oh. I love this. Good. Benissimo. That was a good one, yeah. right? Okay. Adesso un altro tipo di pasta. Now okay. Now you try another. Marrones de burza. Oh, oh. oh. So that's the um the darning needle. Forte. Right. Speedy. Wow, okay. I used to be known as the tool belt diva, but after this trip, I might become the pasta princess. Brava, complimenti. <laughs> Questa estate. This summer? Okay. This summer yeah, you gotta I'll come back. back. Yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh. Brava. The pasta is made. Now we're off to Cencedu's restaurant in Oliana for a very special meal, inspired by the writing of Nobel Prize winning Sardinian author Grazia de Leda. Here we are with Cencedu, and he's created something so special. It's a menu based on the writings of a Nobel Prize winner in literature who comes from this area in Barbaja, actually right up the block from here. So basically, um, all of the foods that she writes about, he captured all that and made this incredible menu. So we have the breads, and these are typical cheeses from the area? Pecorino. Pecorino. That's the sheep cheese. We have pasta made a mano, always with semola di grano duro, the salsicce, la treccia di agnello. Okay, so this is sausage, this is the lamb intestine, yeah. Yeah. and this is the pasta I got to make in the, in the pastry shop. This is unique just to here, and this is sheep cheese made with worms. But the worms are still in there right now? Yeah. They're in there now. Yeah. The, are, they, are they crawling in there right now? They are alive, yeah. They're alive? Si, si. Right now? And I guess I'm gonna try it right now. Okay, so this is the sheep cheese with the, with the worms in it. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, no. It's actually good. <laughs> what is this? Questa è una pasta particolare che fa solo una famiglia di Nuoro ed è dedicata. There's only one family left making this type of pasta exactly. here because, I mean, I don't recognize it as being pasta. Yeah. What's the name of it? Qual è il nome? Feeling new. It's the thread of God. Exactly. Are we going to get to try this? Certamente. Yeah. Andiamo. Okay, let's go in the kitchen. As we step into the kitchen, Chen Chedu's wife is prepping the broth for the thread of the god's pasta, and it smells amazing. I'm so curious to see how this filandeo pasta is gonna yeah. cook. Ciao. Ciao. Tonina. Starts like this, and it becomes like this. The thread of god pasta in a sheep broth, su filandeo. Okay. That's so good. Yeah? Mmm. Wow. That is really, really good. What city has the best carnival uh, festival? Traditional. Traditional one. Traditional. Mamoyada. I'm in Mamoyada celebrating carnival with the Mamutones and Isandores. And I just got lassoed by Danielle makes the carnival masks here. <laughs> if a woman gets lassoed, it's supposed to be very good luck. It's like catching the bouquet at a wedding, so I'm feeling very lucky right now. Thank you. Oh, that's a good thought. And the beautiful mask that he and his father make. 
The Sardinian costumes are unique, but every year a group of Slovenian wild things invade Sardinia and take this party up a notch. I think I know where I'll be for carnival next year. The parade in Mamoyada starts out like all the other celebrations, but it quickly turns into an all-out Mardi Gras-style bash, and Norma's ready to get her groove on. After a week of visiting workshops and getting my hands dirty, it's nice to play a little dress up in this stunning traditional dress from the town of Oliena. And what a glorious send off with a private performance by Sardinian folk dancers and tenoris, recognized by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage. Thank you for joining me in Sardinia. I look forward to seeing you next time as we travel the world on my artisanal journey.